If you're new to our channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And we had a caller uh, on the break, and it's, uh, I think you're saying her name, Amad Tula, I hope I'm saying that right. And she had a question about her compost. She does a trench composting method, and she puts, she doesn't put meat in there, it sounds like, just uh, veg- vegetable scraps, uh, even bread, and then pasta. Cook, sounds like cooked pasta. And the animals are coming and digging it up. She did put a grate over top of that area, which was just a barbecue grate, uh, uh, and they were able to flip that over and flip that up and dig the compost, uh, the, the scraps out. I would probably stop putting cooked foods in there, just the raw vegetable scraps. I'd also try to dig it deeper or even just put some, like a two by four on it. Uh, some kind of plywood two by four or scraps of lumber just to suppress that down to prevent the animals from uh, digging that up. But also that, that pasta, you may have included butter in that, uh, a, a smell of some sort. Uh, uh, bread that's probably enticing them to dig deeper and if the animal is hungry enough it really doesn't make it matter really honestly what you do if it's hungry enough uh, on the farm and, and I'll tell a story real quick uh, when animals would pass away we would take and bury them to get rid of them and we would put them three or f- three foot deep uh, in an area and cover them with soil but in a couple of days the coyotes the cougars the panthers would have it dug back up and it would be out in the open. Pass, so, pass away. Pass away, yeah. Uh, yeah, they uh, died. Yeah. It's a natural progression of I know, life. It's just yeah. nice okay. that you said that. Uh, she had another question in regards to tree trimming and property lines. Sure, so she wanted to know um, the tree, if it grows over, like I said, the property line, and it grows over onto your neighbor's side, who's responsible for maintaining that tree on the other side? It would be you. Um, in most situations, it's your tree. You would have to have a conversation with your neighbor, though, if you needed to get that tree trimmed or something, and then have it trimmed, but make sure it's on a, a day or time that is, is okay for them, too. Yes. Uh, thank, we appreciate the, the question and uh, listening as well. Uh, next question is, hello, my name is John. I'm from, uh, the, from West, uh, Waukesha, Wisconsin. I, ha- I live in an apartment, have a small patio, and I would love to grow some veggies. The problem is there's not a lot of sunlight here. Are there vegetables that do well that don't require a lot of sun? Well, right. So I have a saying. I don't know where I got the saying from, but if you grow up for the fruit or root, you want full sun. If you grow up for the greens or herbs, you want it. You can have partial shade. So you can grow greens. You can grow a lot of greens, uh, kale, Swiss chard. You can even grow some root crops. It might be a little bit not as yeah, big. Four to six hours of sunlight. Yeah. Um, you could grow cherry tomatoes. Those are okay. You wouldn't want to try you want like, at least six hours of sun for cherries. Yeah. Uh, um, herbs can go about four, a little less than four hours. Uh, lettuce, of lettuce, spinach, yeah. radishes. So there's a lot of options in which you can grow in partial shade, partial shade being four to six hours. Our friend Nathan in Green Bay, what is the best time to plant asparagus and strawberry crowns before or after first frost date? Well, uh, right now is the best time here in the upper portions of the Midwest to get those in the ground. You can uh, get them from bare roots from your local independent garden garden center or you can buy them online and uh, when you plant your asparagus you want to space the roots uh, out like a spider so that they can uh, produce and grow uh, for a long time 20 to 50 years and then strawberries will last five to seven years you have an option of growing june bearing which produce in june uh, that do produce daughter plants which is the propagation means of reproductive on the plant or or ever bearing which produce several times a year and uh, are uh, they do, do do not produce runners. On All right, the- next question, please. I need help. I have a compost pile of that heats up, but it smells like ammonia. Why? Well, this is because you uh, you do not have the right ratio. If your compost pile smells uh, like ammonia, uh, the most common reason is you have too much green material or a lack of brown material in your compost pile. You should have about two to three times more brown material than green material. Brown material is uh, shredded paper, dry leaves, that type of item, and the green material is shredded or uh, grass clippings, chemical-free grass clippings, yard waste, kitchen scraps, that type of material. So get the ratio right, and the smell will go away. I normally plant my indeterminate tomatoes horizontally in my garden bed in the trench method. I have several determinate varieties that I was wondering if I can do the same practice too. I was reading you shouldn't trim off the bottoms as much as the indeterminate, so I thought maybe I shouldn't plant them horizontal in the trench method 
because I trim off quite a bit when they're indeterminate in the trench method. Well, you can plant the determinate varieties in, a, in the trench method. You may not want to bury them all the way. We plant ours about 75% down the stem, removing all the leaves except for the top canopy, With the and those are the indeterminate. With the determinate, you might want to only go about 50% uh, depth in the hole because the determinate is only going to get to a certain height, then bear its fruit. Becky from Southern California writes in and asks, Two months ago, our family got a new Labrador puppy, and he chews on everything and loves to explore. My concern is that he will get in the vegetable garden and try to eat a fruit or vegetable, and it will make him sick. Do I need to be worried about this? So we're going to go out to Ben Bartley. He is from Standard Process Farms. Standard Process is your trusted whole food supplement manufacturer for over 90 years. To help identify the best supplements for you, find your local health care professional today. Go to standardprocess.com forward slash patient. Hello, this is Ben Bartlett from the Standard Process Organic Farm. Today we got a great question from Becky. She got a new lab puppy and wondered if it was okay to have that puppy around the garden. It's a great question, and there's a couple things to be aware of. First one is your fertilizers. Make sure that after you put fertilizer down, even if it's organic, things like bone meal uh, or kelp meal, even those type of products can be poisonous or at least harmful if the puppy gets too much of them. So make sure that you water them in or work them into the soil so the puppy isn't attracted to, to eating some of those. The second thing is there is a classification of plants, uh, tomatoes, peppers, eggplant, uh, potatoes. Those are all in the nightshade family. Those can be poisonous or very toxic to a, to a pet. So try not to let them eat either the plants or the fruit off, those, off that family of plants, and your puppy should be just fine around the garden. For more information, please visit the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com.